Now. On 105.9 FM and streaming worldwide on the WMAL app. O'Connor and Company. It's 736. It's O'Connor and Company. Larry O'Connor with Patrice on WUCA. And joining us right now is Matt Schlapp. Of course, he is the chairman of the American Conservative Union. They put on the annual CPAC conference, which is next week. National Harbor That's right. will be there live. Absolutely. I can't wait. Air. I love doing CPAC. Absolutely. Yeah. We do every year. And Matt, uh, gosh, there's so much to talk to you about. First of all, are you okay? Are you getting any sleep? Are you, are you <laughs> primed and ready for next week? We're, we're ready. You know, um, uh, the Schlapp household is a busy one. I will admit that. <laughs> and, uh, uh, CPAC is kind of a family affair. We get all the kids are out there helping us work the uh, operation. You know, it's a volunteer uh, event. People don't realize that. Yeah. But, you know, our paid staff is pretty small and hundreds of people from around the country mm. return every year. We, we, we know they're friendly faces uh, and they just love you know, playing this important role at CPEX. So it's a it's a really great event. By the way, a lot of the volunteers, of course, come from this area and not coincidentally are listeners to this program. Is That's it right. too is it too late for any of our listeners to want to volunteer and be a part of the team no. there? No, we're down to crunch time. This is the final week. So anybody who wants to volunteer can go to CPAC.org. You can get your tickets. We did the tickets differently this year. We started off at a lower rate, ninety five dollars. We've moved that up to hundred and ninety five dollars and that will go up eventually to $295 as we get closer to the event. We usually start at 295 so we started at a mm. lower price point and moved up. And uh, anyway, I guess the, the feeling on that is, yeah. you know, Reagan's promise, keep those tickets as low as possible uh, and let people of, you know, who don't have a lot of money participate in this great, important movement. Well, and Matt, it's needed now more than ever, given that inflation is still up, uh, like what, 20 percent since President Biden took office. So thank you for the relief for for attendees. But I want to talk big picture about the conference. I'm, I'm actually on your website looking at the agenda. I've got some great speakers. Is there an overall theme this year? Yeah, uh, where, glo- where globalism goes to die. Mm-hmm. So our thinking is we just we all watched what happened in Davos. It was just disgusting and uh they're getting more and more cocky about the fact that they're going to dictate what you eat, what kind of fuel you can put in your car, if you can have a car, the fact that you're not going to own anything, they're going to own everything, uh, what you know, medicines you can take and not take, all, all these basic questions. Uh, you know, Davos used to be a place where CEOs kind of assembled and probably uh, you had too much wine, and <laughs> now it's turned into this kind of authoritarian uh, effort and and we're the pushback to that not, not just CPAC but I mean people who believe in freedom yeah. and I think CPAC has to be a, a central rallying cry to these you know authoritarian regimes and it's not just Davos it's really kind of every globalist entity has been taken over by either Beijing or woke corporate interests so we got we, we got to take our power back. Uh, Matt Schlapp is our guest, and you talk about the global impact uh, of CPAC juxtaposed against the World Economic Forum. You made an announcement yesterday uh, with the president of Argentina as your uh, final keynote speaker. Actually, well, it's hard to follow Donald Trump, who will be speaking Saturday afternoon or midday. But you've got Malay now finishing it up. That's a hell of a one-two punch to end this conference. Also lost in the mix here is the president of El Salvador, who is a real champion mm. of law and order, freedom, really trying to put that country back on the map by not exporting people to this country as illegal immigrants, but actually making El Salvador a place where people, freedom-loving people, can live safely and thrive. I mean, freedom spreading right now. I wish we had that kind of thought process in America's bigger cities with their Democrat mayors. Well, you know, WMAL has always played a special role at CPAC. As you said, so many of the local people who go to the event every year listen to your wonderful show and start their day off with your show. And one of the interesting things is I think the largest Hispanic community in the area is El Salvadoran. Mm -hmm. It seems like so many of the people we know uh, in the area are El Salvadoran, and they're so pumped that this president, this young president who is, once again, standing up to the globalists and saying, we're not going to do it your way, we're going to do it our way, and hey, it's not controversial to say gang members and MSM 13 and the rest of them should be put in prison for the rest of their life. And that's what he's doing. And my my impression from the people in this area is they are just thanking God that someone is finally standing up and protecting their country. 
Absolutely. So listen, I know that everybody is going to be watching for the straw poll results. Um, and I think it's probably one of the biggest, uh, second to the, the different wonderful speakers, including President Trump oh, no, on Saturday. I, I really but, chuckle because is it really going to be close? Well, I mean, yeah. I mean, Matt, do you have any <laughs> insights to give us? Because I know those are going to be big headlines coming out of uh, CPAC. This yeah, is Nikki going to show up and ask for some votes here? <laughs> Um, as I say, the only state Nikki Haley is winning in is the state of denial. Oh, but the, um, <laughs> the, uh, the uh, straw poll, I think the big question of straw poll is not are the people assembled for Trump. That's, that'll be high 90s. The question is uh, who should be his VP? Mm. I think that's kind of the big newsy question. They're all going to be there. You know, Christy Nome, Byron Donald, uh, Ben Carson, Elise Stefanik. I mean, it, you know, everyone that's being – mentioned J.D. Vance is going to be on the stage mm -hmm. uh, making their pitch mm -hmm. and showing okay. us their stuff. And uh, okay. you know who's going to be watching all that? You know who. Yeah, Donald exactly. Trump's going to be watching <laughs> all that. <laughs> His own version of The Apprentice. Uh, <laughs> he's going to be vice president. What's kind of funny is CPAC is on the, that last day, Saturday, is the yeah. day of the South Carolina primary. And frankly, oh. the events at CPAC will probably be a bigger news story yeah. <laughs> than sort of the fait accompli that we're going to see down in the Palmetto State. Hey, Matt, can you stick with us? I, I know you're busy right now. Do you have another media hit or can you stick with us for another segment? Because I really want your political analysis. I'll, I'll cancel it. Make I'll just cancel you. it. I'll, All right. I'll, I'll hang in there. That's right. All Thanks, right. Thank, I appreciate that. <laughs> Mr. Wade is used to women that, uh, as he told me one time, the only thing a woman can do for him is make him a sandwich. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Yikes. Hey, uh, Matt, you ever try that with Mercedes? He's, hey, hey, Mercy, <laughs> could, could you just go make something happen in the kitchen, honey? Know your place. I don't know. I thought that was a very unfortunate answer. I don't, you know, I didn't get to watch it live. And it was one of these things where I started watching clips online and I couldn't put my phone down. It was like, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Right. <laughs> this was like the Onion, Babylon Bee, Saturday Night Live, like all wrapped up into one. And you just have to ask yourself, like, these big cities, who the hell are they electing for these jobs? Yeah. Mm. Well, and it's one thing that these are the kind of district attorneys who have turned our major cities into crime-ridden cesspools like the one we're sitting in right now, sadly. But listen, this is the far-reaching ramifications of this criminal trial, the, the use of RICO and racketeering against advisors to the president. This would put a chilling effect on future president's advisors, right? And also, uh, by the way, have a direct effect in interfering in this presidential election. Uh, this, I, regardless of what the decision is, this woman is overseeing this incredibly consequential criminal prosecution, Matt, that affects every single American citizen right now with regard to this election. Yeah. It's a hell of an insight into what the president is facing, President Trump, that is. What kind of effect is this going to have and how does Trump deal with this? You know, I don't really understand. Um, I don't really understand how to where we're going to go from here. But I will say this, um, his cases against him are all crumbling one by one. And she said on that stand yesterday that she's going after these people because they tried to steal the election. The fact is she's trying to steal an election. She's mm -hmm. trying to steal the next election. Yeah. She's trying to prevent Donald Trump from being on the ballot um, uh, this year. And I will say this, I took a phone call from one of the people who was surveilled that's come out in this whole Matt Taibbi um, oh, yeah. A really interesting investigation. Mm -hmm. you know, the, these victims were surveilled. Their phone, re their phones were tapped. Um, you know, the, they are going to need to be made financially whole mm. for those crimes. And I'll tell you who else needs to be made financially whole. Everybody associated with the Russian collusion lie. People lost mm -hmm. millions of dollars because they had to pay for lawyers. Their lives were ruined. Donald Trump has spent $100 million on lawyers. I want that to come out of the hide of the Department of Justice. CPAC is going to lead a legislative effort to make sure all of those victims are made whole. I think the That's Republican good. Party needs to pick this up as a huge uh, issue going forward. And, you know, uh, I'll tell you something else. We can't allow these criminals, the DOJ and the FBI, to get away with these crimes without having to – you know, pay a financial consequence themselves. I mean, all they do is go to CNN and get contracts. Yeah. Fonnie right. Willis, yeah. uh, you know, she'll be on MSNBC with her own show pretty soon. You know, they don't reward oh. decency or talent. So, mm. you know, this is a very serious, Larry's right, this is a very serious problem. We cannot have a country, a free country, if the left can continue just to uh, intimidate every person on the right 
uh, through these big cities legal process. It just we're going to lose the country. CPAC is next week. It's going to be a blast. We're going to be there. We'll be live. Vince Colonnais will be there broadcasting. You'll see WMAL all over the place, and we can't wait. And uh, Matt, I, it's weird that that whole Jenna Ellis pleading guilty. Uh, I don't know if that was a good idea. Now that you see exactly how this whole case is uh, coming down, I don't know if you uh, have any feelings. Fair about point. That. I mean. Fair point. I think. Mm. All, look, I think all of these people. Um, I think we have to fight. As mm. painful as it is, you have yeah. to fight. You have to fight. fight them every step of the way. Thank you, Pat. Great talking with you. Thanks, Matt. It's-